S. Vyasa, the Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anusandana Samstana near Bangalore, is the world's first yoga university. It is a pioneer in the field of yoga therapy treatment, education, and research. The history of S. Vyasa begins with Sushrivi Lakshmiyama. She fell ill and spent 15 years bedridden. After trying all the approaches to modern medicine, she went to a series of lectures on Vedanta, the science of awakening to one's true self. Her health began to improve immediately, and she soon experienced full recovery. She was so impressed by her experience that she created a center near Bangalore where others could explore spirituality and healing. She was soon joined by her nephew, Dr. Nagendra, formerly a research associate at NASA, and her niece, Dr. Nagaratna, a physician working in England. They were drawn to her vision of healing based in Vedic culture and yoga. Their main inspiration was Swami Vivekananda. He was one of the first Indian teachers to bring yoga to the West. His vision of bringing together the best of the East and the West forms the foundation of S. Vyasa's approach. Because of Lakshmiyama's healing experience, S. Vyasa has had a strong focus on yoga therapy right from the start. Dr. Nagendra, along with his team, visited leading yoga therapy centers throughout India in the 1970s to find the most appropriate yoga techniques for each health condition. Dr. Nagaratna led the study of the medical applications of yoga. As a physician, she knew that the benefits of yoga as therapy could only be brought into the mainstream if there was research to support it. In the early 1980s, Dr. Nagaratna and Dr. Nagendra began a study on the effects of yoga for asthma, which showed that yoga could actually cure it. This research, published in the British Journal of Medicine, was a turning point not only for S. Vyasa, but for yoga therapy research as a whole. From that point on, S. Vyasa grew steadily, inaugurating yoga therapy training programs, as well as an annual international yoga research conference. An important foundation of S. Vyasa's growth has been to uphold their vision of yoga based on the original texts, especially the Yoga Sutras, Yoga Vashista, and Bhagavad Gita. Dr. Nagendra's work is unique in that he has synthesized models for health and healing directly from these texts, many of which have appeared in S. Vyasa's monthly magazine, Yoga Sudha. In 2002, S. Vyasa became the first yoga university recognized by the Indian government, offering a wide range of programs, including a BA, MA, and PhD in yoga therapy. As we tour the campus, we sense both the academic environment and the spiritual essence of an authentic yoga community. Each day on campus begins with early morning yoga. And after breakfast, there is a general assembly featuring inspired discourses by the chancellor or vice chancellors. There is also chanting of the Bhagavad Gita, whose values form the framework of campus life by cultivating qualities such as selfless service and discipline. The spirit of yoga is clearly seen on festival days when more than 200 students, both men and women, perform a series of 108 sun salutations as a symbol of their dedication to the yogic path. Research forms a strong foundation for all of the yoga therapy programs. At the postgraduate level, PhD candidates must publish three papers in research journals in order to complete their degree. Much of S. Vyasa's research is done at their yoga hospital, Arogyadama, which means abode of healing. Arogyadama was one of the first yoga hospitals in India and continues to be one of the foremost. Those who come for treatment are called participants rather than patients because their program is much more holistic and integrative than those offered by conventional medicine. Each participant begins their program with an extensive evaluation by an MD who is also a yoga therapist. Based on this evaluation, participants are divided into groups related to their primary health condition. These groups encompass all the main health issues including cardiovascular, 
respiratory, musculoskeletal, and immune system conditions, including cancer. The specific asana practices for each group have been designed by Dr. Nagendra, Dr. Nagaratna, and their team. S. Vyasa has produced DVDs for many common health conditions, allowing participants to continue their practice at home. The daily schedule at Arogyadama begins in the early morning and continues until bedtime, offering a variety of yoga healing experiences. Activities begin at 5.30 a.m. with pranayama and meditation. A special feature of the meditation is repetition of the three separate letters that comprise OM to awaken and heal the lower, middle, and upper parts of the body. The chanting of the complete OM is used to heal the whole body. From 6.30 to 7.30 a.m., participants practice asanas designed for their specific health condition. Breakfast from 7.30 to 8.15 consists of simple, healthy Indian dishes. After breakfast from 8.15 to 9 a.m., the students, staff, and Arogyadama participants take part in a general assembly with lectures on spiritual themes and chanting of the Bhagavad Gita which are an important part of the healing process. At 9 a.m., participants meet the doctor and therapist assigned to their group to check vital signs and other measures, including pulse, breaths per minute, and breath holding capacity. At these meetings, the yoga therapists teach appropriate techniques for each person's special needs. The opportunity for participants to discuss their challenges and see their daily progress is an important part of the healing process. The next segment of the daily program from 10 a.m. to noon are the Ayurvedic, naturopathic, and physical therapy sessions. Originally, Arogyadama focused mainly on yoga therapy, but over time it has developed an integrative approach, which includes these and other disciplines. Dr. Apar Saoji, a naturopathic physician, outlines this integrative approach. We have integrated all of that. You know, Dr. Nagratna, who is an internal medicine specialist, mm -hmm. becomes a yoga therapist and teaches yoga therapy. Mm -hmm. So we have got integration of yoga therapy with modern medicine there. We've got naturopathy people, we've got Ayurveda, we've got physiotherapy. So here, it's, it's not the uh, physician-centric approach which was there earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to a physician, take a pill that he gives and you're all right. Mm -hmm. But now that the world epidemiology is changing towards non-communicable diseases, towards these heart diseases, stress-related conditions, we need integration. And it's, uh, I would say nothing in nature is complete and that applies to all medical systems also. Naturopathy plays a special role within this approach. Naturopaths believe that all problems, health problems happen if you go away from nature. And if you want to heal yourself, it is coming back to or uh, returning to nature. Now, when we apply yoga as therapy, the yoga therapy, that fits in a non-drug healing method. So it's always nice if we integrate yoga and naturopathy together instead of practicing them separately. The cognitive aspect is an important part of healing and from 12.15 to 1 p.m. there's a lecture related to spirituality or healing. From 1 to 2 is lunch followed by rest time. The afternoon session at 2 o'clock begins with a half hour video giving specific information on approaches to health for various conditions. At 3 p.m. there is cyclic meditation in which active and relaxing exercises are alternated an excellent approach to managing stress. At 4 o'clock, participants have their second group yoga class. Time to attune to nature is an important part of the healing process, and from 5 to 6 p.m., participants sit in a quiet place to meditate or walk on the extensive network of trails. Chanting of bhajans from 6 to 6.30 p.m. awakens the devotional spirit and a sense that their healing journey is supported by the Divine. The practice of Trataka, excellent for the health of the eyes, is from 6.30 to 7 p.m., followed by mind-sound resonance technique, a form of chanting meditation 
based on the Maha Mrityunjaya Mantra. After dinner from 8.30 to 9.00 p.m., there are yogic games with a focus on laughter and fun to end the day on a lighter note. What stands out in the staff and physicians at Arogadama is that along with being highly qualified medical professionals, they are first and foremost yogis deeply committed to yoga therapy. We see this dedication in Dr. Padmini Tekar, who has been treating patients at Arogadama for over 10 years. She is a rare combination of MD, healer, and spiritual guide. Dr. Padmini explains how the healing work at S. Vyasa began. Her nephew, her brother, son, Dr. Nagendra, our Guruji, he came to Prashanti. This was a piece of barren land. And then Dr. Nagaratna, imagine in those days, she had done her MBBS, MD and MRCP. A lady who had done MRCP from England, she gave up her active career in England, came here. They had absolutely nothing to base themselves on. They have, they have been guided by the Divine. She came here, joined her brother, and her aunt and they began to treat patients. It is a story of love, passion, commitment and hard work. Dr. Padmini outlines the Arogadama integrated approach based on the five koshas, the five dimensions of human being. The health of each of these dimensions is addressed by specific practices within the daily program. The first level is the physical body, called Anamaya Kosha, and the techniques used are asanas, cleansing kriyas, and a healthy vegetarian diet. The second level is the energy body, called the Pranamaya Kosha, and the principal technique used to balance it is Pranayama, especially alternate nostril breathing. The third level is the mind and emotions, called Manomaya Kosha, and the techniques used include cyclic meditation, and the chanting of bhajans. The fourth is the level of wisdom, where individuals develop clarity and discernment. This is supported by the inspirational lectures and reading of spiritual texts, such as the Bhagavad Gita. The fifth kosha is the level of bliss, the inherent joy and sense of wholeness that is our true nature. This level is supported by the practice of meditation. Dr. Padmini summarizes her experience at Rogadam. So every day is a miracle in Prashanti. That is the power of yoga. Yoga is such a tremendous potential because it awakens the potential within you, the divinity within you. And for that, I would say there are infinite possibilities when it comes to healing with yoga. The healing work done at Arogadama forms the basis of much of the research performed at S. Vyasa's research center on Vaishnav. S. Vyasa is the world's leader in published yoga research with over 300 papers, which is equivalent to 10% of all research published in the field. S. Vyasa's International Journal of Yoga is dedicated to the promotion of yoga research. Each department at Anvashna represents a world of possibilities for understanding how yoga works. The work done at Anvashna has the possibility to show how yoga might be used in the treatment of illnesses such as Alzheimer's, cancer, and diabetes. Dr. Manjanath, Joint Director of Research and Development, outlines the history and vision of research at S. Vyasa. Uh, in this uh, journey, this institution uh, primarily looking at uh, research as uh, it's one of its major components has started close to 30 years back. While this organization's idea was to understand uh, what happens to an individual when you do yoga. The initial uh, research was all with some very simple uh, gadgets and simple tools. But our mentor, Dr. Shirley Tillis, uh, who was, uh, who in fact initiated the whole research activity here, 
uh, she said uh, that uh, of course if you really want to do research you don't need uh, uh, those big instruments and gadgets uh, you just need some research idea research question so that's that's how we have started the whole journey of research with some very simple uh, tools and uh, it was a challenge uh, to doing research was fun but to publish them was a challenge okay because you want to really publish them then you have the question whether how your research is looked upon by the international community dr manjanath groups the yoga research into four areas the first is the psychophysiology of yoga. The second is yoga as therapy. The third, yoga in rehabilitation. And the fourth, yoga for improving perception and performance. At the level of psychophysiology, one interesting study from S. Vyasa shows that the four traditional levels of meditation can be seen as separate phenomena in the brain using functional MRI. In terms of yoga therapy, a study done on cancer patients showed that yoga could reduce the side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. This project, done at Esfiasa, serves as a model for a study at MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is one of the largest grants ever given for yoga research. Dr. Manjanath sums up the research programs at Esfiasa. Uh, our approach of looking at yoga and yoga therapy scientifically has uh, really yielded uh, an excellent uh, outcome for us by making it somewhat evidence-based. I don't say today either we have around 280 publications, the world over we have around 2,800 papers, we are evidence-based. No, we have lots to do, we have lots to understand. An excellent beginning has been made and we have a long way to go. The overall results of Esfiasa's research supports their vision that is the yoga lifestyle as a whole that promotes healing. So what we learned from the study is the yoga way of life. That is important rather than doing a particular asana or a particular pranayama, or a mudra, or a bandha, or a kriya, other things. You know? So it's a way of life if you can build, then it's going to bring change. This is what we learned from it. This vision is now expanding around the globe and SVS is developing centers in the United States as well as in China. SVASA is also pioneering the yoga therapy of the future by exploring ways to measure states of balance and imbalance within all five koshas that serve as the basis of individualized yoga therapy programs. Esviasa is at the forefront of a project supported by the Indian government to completely revision the nature of medicine and the role of the physician. How to bring the best of every system to this system and develop a system which will be very holistic. You know? Every system has its own pluses and minuses. Modern medical system is not a remedy for everything we have come to understand today. It has its strong points, it has got very good contributions, at the same time, it has nothing in the other thing. Similarly, other systems have their own speciality. Can you bring and bridge all these things into an integrated whole? This new model points toward a future in which physicians are educated as whole person healers. This is what he dreamed of, he told, combine the best of the East with the best of the West. Yeah. Best of the West is all modern technology, science, these things, instrumentation. Best of the East is all this wisdom base is available thousands of years old, everything is available. As we start understanding and going deeper and deeper, we are amazed 